Hey guys, welcome back to my fish room. So last week I posted a video of my Lamprologus oscillatus gold, an in-depth species profile on those fish, and you can watch that video right here. However, I thought I'd do a bit of an update on the fish, uh, just to show you how they're going. And as you can see here, I have some fry. Um, so about a couple days after I finished filming that video last week, I noticed that the female at the front of the tank, this is the female who's always been bonded with, had fry in her shell. Uh, this is the largest spawn that she's had since, uh, since she's been breeding with her. And I, I believe there's about 10 fry from her. So I'm really glad about that. You can see this is the pitch she's created. It's about six inches uh, in radius. Uh, so she would cover about an area of about a foot if this shell wasn't right up against the tank, at the front of the tank. So yeah, when I filmed this, this was pretty much the day I noticed the fry were free swimming. You can see they're just staying at the opening of the shell, hardly coming out of the shell, just staying there uh, in the, in the, with the security of the shell. And um, yeah, I was stoked obviously to see fry because it's been about oh, a month and a half, maybe two months since the last time these fish had spawned for me. So a bit of a quick backstory with these fish. The male you see there has just gone right off the screen with this female here on the, on the left in the center now. Uh, they've always been bonded. However, they've got an, I've got another female at the back. You can't see her in the frame. And he, the, the bond broke between that female at the back and the male. So um, they were in the 40 liter nano aquarium and I took that as an opportunity to move these fish into my fish room, into this two foot cube uh, and hope that the bond would be, re be restored between the male and the female at the back. And sure enough, within three to four days, that bond was restored. And uh, the female at the back now also has fry as well. So I've got two female gold ockies in this two foot tank, uh, two foot cube tank, and they both have fry. So I believe there's po possibly at least 20 fry between the two females, but I suspect there is more because the female at the back of the tank regularly has more fry per spawn. And her last spawn, she had about 30 fry in the one spawn. This female at the front that you see here, she has generally around 10 or under 10 fry per spawn. But this is the largest that female at the front um, has spawned for me. So I'm really stoked. I'm really glad that uh, I finally have some fry again on the way for, of my, with my gold hockeys. Uh, kind of hard to get an angle of the of the fry there. They're about uh, two, two days old there. And um, yeah, I'm just really stoked. And guys, this is what I mean by competition and Lamprologus oscillatus bearing shells that are potential places for competition to move into. So I've put my spare male gold oscillatus that's in there in a four foot by two foot by two foot tank with four brevis and they dominated this side of the tank and they were in this tank for about two weeks with um, some ventralis, that's those guys up here, open water fish. Put him in the tank, he was fighting with the brevis, my gold oscillatus, that guy, he was fighting with the brevis and they banished him to the back corner over there, I had one shell over there for him and the next day I came home from work and he had moved all four brevis from their shells that they were inhabiting for two weeks out of this whole area of the tank. Basically a two foot span of tank, maybe just over two foot, is now his and he owns all these shells. The brevis, you can see the brevis here, he moved them all out and now he has this shell, you can see how he's buried it. You can see the streaks he's formed with his bodies that lead to the shell. I believe, I've read on the line that that helps small particles of food uh, in the water column uh, get funneled towards his shell. That's what I've read it help does. But I think it's just the byproduct of the way he's dug the pit. There's streaks coming out of the shell uh, and he's made them with his belly as he's rubbed his belly and mouth against the sand and swum through the sand. But that shell is almost completely buried. But with the removing the ability for competition to move by, there's another shell there, you can hardly see it poking out, the back of it's poking out of the sand. He's completely buried that. 
and that's another shell. He's completely buried the opening of that. And I believe there's another shell just under that mound there that is completely buried. So in last week's video, I mentioned in my uh, in-depth species profile on Lamprologus ocellatus that they like to bury shells that will prevent competition from moving in. And this is a very good example of that behavior. And like I said, he wasn't in this tank for more than two days and he had moved all four brevis out of this whole part of the tank. Now brevis aren't as aggressive to um, other cichlids as Lamprologus ocellatus and this gives you a good idea of how aggressive these guys are taking over. One, one fish that's about almost two inches long has taken over two feet of the whole four foot aquarium. So over half the aquarium is his <laughs> and uh, yeah that's pretty pretty surprising for such a small fish but it just highlights their their behavior their aggression and how dominant they are in a in a, in a cichlid fish tank and how much they can take over a system so just bear that in mind if you do decide to get into Lamprologus ocellatus beautiful fish uh, about and a very interesting behavior and when you've got them in a tank that's this large you can see they start to really show how they would act in the wild and how much territory they would um, have to their own, to have to themselves in, in the actual lake. And guys, these are the first fish that I've spawned in my fish room. Really happy about that. I mean, I've bred guppies in my fish room, but these are my first cichlids that I've spawned in the fish room. So yeah, really stoked that it ha just happened to be the gold ockies. Here you can see the fry eating baby brine shrimp and you can see their bellies are orange full of that baby brine shrimp really good food for them at this young age and um, just remember to vary their diet they do get what the parents uh, eat as well um, you can see that's the shell that they were all spawned in uh, at the back there and the mother going in the shell I'm not sure if she's got more eggs or not but yeah happy days so here's some of the Lamprologus ocellata skull fry you can see they're all looking at me, they think they're going to get fed, oh something scared them. May have been the new fish that are in another tank. They're looking pretty good. We're talking centimetre, just over a centimetre now at three months old. And yeah, with more new fry on the way, which is great because I want to keep breeding these guys. Because they aren't really a common fish in the hobby in Australia. And uh, yeah, I love them, they're just, they're just a nice fish with a lot of character nice colour and yeah they're, they're just they just uh, just really like these dwarf cichlids so I've got about 30 in this tank and about uh, sorry 30 maybe 40 in this tank actually and about 10 in the other tank so I'm gonna have to swap some over just the other 10 are a bit larger and these guys were, were, were a tad small too small to put in that tank but I'll be able to swap them over and uh, share the love amongst the tanks here because I've got 12 of these tanks and it's a bit of a waste just having they're meant to eat with um, all these fish in the one tank when uh, they need to grow into bigger fish so I can sell them sooner. But yeah, that's, that's my Lamprologus ocellatus gold fry at about three months, maybe three and a half months old. So there you have it guys, my one week update on my Lamprologus ocellatus gold shellies. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Now next week, I'm gonna be doing a video that might surprise some of you guys uh, about some fish that I purchased yesterday that I believe every fish room should have. And I'm gonna explain why in that video next week. So if you're interested in that, please hit the subscribe button, hit like, comment, all that stuff. Really help me out, I really appreciate it. All right guys, that wraps it up for today. I hope you enjoyed that video once again. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.